I'm building a new LEGO factory with tons of mechanisms inside to assemble spaceships for every color of astronaut minifigure and then using them to save the world. This is a robot minifigure named Cosmo, and he's got a weird mismatch of colors, like pink, green, and white. What is this, a watermelon? I'm kind of addicted to making vibrant and colorful factories to go with the different robot minifigures LEGO puts out, but this will be the hardest challenge yet. It was hard enough building this little time machine to go with him, more on that later, but to do an entire building, we'll need a few more sand green bricks than the 12 I currently have. That requires a different kind of green. That's kind of how it feels sometimes. I spent way too much money online acquiring all the bricks and detail pieces we'll need, hopefully, in each of Cosmo's four main colors. I also found some of these really cool crater base plates from the 1980s to simulate the surface of an alien planet where the factory will be located. Cosmo is joining the research team at Space Colony V24, who are tasked with capturing all sorts of dangerous but familiar looking aliens from all across the galaxy, like Marshy, Toothy, Goldie, and many, many more, putting them all in this giant cage. But they need more spaceships for their final and most deadly mission, so I got to work arranging a foundation for the factory big enough to assemble them inside. Looking back to our color palette, I'm using white bricks as the bottom layer, and for these stacked up corner posts, sand green will make up the bulk of the wall's main structure, with primary details in dark pink and very limited accents using this lime color. But I gotta be careful not to overuse that one. Like, this is probably too much. But that's the game plan for the outside. On the inside, I eventually want to create all sorts of gadgets and gizmos to make spaceship assembly easier, but but for now, let's just tile off the floor so we can hand build our first spaceship on it for this brown astronaut minifigure named Denny and his baby Benny. All the astronauts' names need to rhyme, by the way, it's just the law. But to build this, I'm recreating that one scene from the Lego movie. Except this one will be a brown spaceship. Well, cool, that took forever to animate. Shout out to Jumi Film for the brick built motion smears idea, by the way. His recreation was way smoother than mine. But the three of them worked together to build this massive massive spaceship that ended up being way bigger than the factory itself, so it's a good thing we haven't made the walls yet. I started out just copy pasting that design from the movie brick for brick, but that's boring, and combining brown and yellow looked kind of nasty, so the rest of the ship was totally freehand with a color combo that's much more fitting to the passengers. Denny can squeeze into the cockpit here, and this hatch also opens up to reveal a little space nursery inside for Benny. With a space crib, space teddy bear, and this book of space dad jokes, Denny is practicing as a first time dad. Like, how do you put an astronaut baby to sleep? You rock it. We'll work on those. But now they're ready to rocket off to a new planet and capture the next alien. Their futuristic missiles are actually powered by the subscribe button. So please, do your part and subscribe. Oh, it's working. Just a few more. Come on. All right. We've successfully stunned it. Thank you. This one's name is Stretchy. Ah, I don't like that, ugh. Let's quickly banish that thing and start work on the factory's main entrance. I've done double doors, I've done a garage door, and having this factory set in space gives me the perfect opportunity to build a cool futuristic airlock door. Using a bunch of complicated gears in this gear sandwich and these segments that slide along some grooves, I was able to make it open and close automatically by turning this little knob. It's actually the same technique I used to build a flushable Lego toilet like six years ago. I love how both halves are perfectly in sync. Well, almost perfect. Technically, airlocks are supposed to have two sets of doors, and it would be a really cool effect to layer this design, but having to duplicate this entire mechanism would just look too bulky. So I think one door is satisfying enough. I just hope spamming it like this doesn't create enough friction to... Okay, wow, this would be the perfect time to build our second spaceship for Rennie here. Honestly, no idea what I was cooking with this one. It looks like if the battle bus was a fire truck. But we've got a ladder, water blasters to put out fires, this back engine to start new fires, and even a hot tub inside. Each new spaceship we build helps the team reach further and further planets. And this time, Rennie's ladder sure came in handy to capture Blooty. But now let's tear down this example wall to start building the real deal. I know not everyone loves my overwhelming level of greebling detail, and I did try my best to tone it down slightly, but this is an alien space station, so I think I have an excuse to make it a little wacky. I'm sorry. This corner is where we can park Cosmo's time machine, and in this corner, we have another time machine, apparently. Cosmo from the future brought Garrett from the past here to stop the impending calamity, but they can't let current Cosmo see them at all costs. If if that makes any sense. We need to get the temporal jade back before he uses it. Here, put this on. <gasps> he disguised Garrett as his descendant, Garreni. I'm okay. To hopefully get close to current Cosmo without arousing suspicion. 
He offered to take the gem off his hands while they build the next spaceship to no avail. They're gonna have to think of something else, but Garrett got a little distracted. A carrot spaceship. It's everything he's ever wanted. It's even made using Lego brick separators. Like what more could you ask for? He stumbled his way to the next planet, nabbing Crunchy to bring back home and refuel his ship. This tank on the side of the alien's cage is to supply the spaceships and time machine with juice. Carrot juice. Yeah, nice try. In the future, carrots were discovered as a highly efficient fuel source, causing their value to skyrocket. But as I continue to spend way too much time building way too much detail into the walls, including tubing, Cosmo's logo, and these guitar pieces on the back, I always create such a mess from all the leftover bricks I experiment with. Like, how does it get this bad? My first factory just polluted all its waste, and the second one recycled. And we all know how well that ended up. And now this factory will deal with garbage in a really unique way. Space is extremely limited in, well, space, so we can't have debris just piling up like this. Like any good space station, we need a trash compactor in the factory, with these teeth made from a pattern of cheese slopes that all perfectly line up in a really satisfying way. We can use this bad boy to squeeze all our garbage into tiny little cubes. Stacking them manually is way too much work. So the yellow spaceman Lenny had an idea. His sleek yellow spaceship is probably my favorite design so far, and he used it to apprehend an alien trash droid named Wally, inspired by this comment from the official YouTube account. They probably won't comment on this video though, right? Everyone else should comment down below as well. Let me know your favorite astronaut, spaceship, alien, and space dad joke. Wait a second, Sparky? How'd you get here? It turned out Lenny had some stowaways on his spaceship that blended right in. This is Robbie, the now ancient robot repair tech, who came to warn everyone about the source of all the aliens located back on their home planet. We're gonna need every spaceship we can build to face it, so let's crank production into overdrive. It's finally time to face my arch nemesis, the conveyor belt. Motorizing the last one was an absolute pain, so this one will just be powered by a hand crank. And these little segments can be clipped together to create custom lengths that are much easier to work with than the fixed size of rubber tracks. Or so I thought. In fact, I could even make two separate conveyor belts that turn into sync with each other using these gears on the outer wall. And because I love making things overly complicated for myself, let's put this one at an angle. <laughs> I tried to make it even more complicated by connecting all this to the trash compactor and forming one big mega mechanism. But while it is super satisfying to watch, in the back it's a janky mess. And I don't think it's worth making the factory this tall for. Let me quickly decorate the front of them. And now having more precise treads and controls than ever before allows us had changed directions on a dime, indicated by these blinking arrows on the wall above. Before we explore all the uses for this machine and the headaches that come with it, I want to build a spaceship that can go forwards and backwards, just like the conveyor belt. So, introducing Yenny and Jenny, two best friends that could not be more different from each other. I mean, it's like black and white. Their ships, however, will be exactly the same. Like, literally every tiny detail is identical. identical. It makes for a really cool effect, but it's so we can fuse them together to form the space equivalent of one of those cursed cars cars that mess with your head. You could argue in the comments which way is forwards and which is backwards, but they went this direction to capture Spidery, by far the creepiest alien yet, and that direction to collect Minikitty, a very nostalgic design straight from the LEGO Star Wars games. Let's actually use these guys to test the conveyor belt. This side works great, but when we try to go up or down the slope, gravity just has to make things difficult. I tried adding a railing to keep them contained, this hook to drag them up, just blowing on them really hard, but nothing was working, man. Moving something two inches upwards shouldn't be that hard, but there just isn't any friction to stop things from getting stuck in the crevice of doom. Lego makes rubber grips for bigger tread pieces, but they literally don't exist in this size. So I tried making my own grips using double-sided tape. It was super tedious putting it on each individual tread, and I don't even know if it'll work yet. All right, moment of truth. Oh, let's go! It actually works, both going up and going down. I think we've earned another one of Denny's space dad jokes. What keeps an astronaut's pants up? An asteroid belt! Come to think of it, I'm not actually sure if Lenny is wearing pants. It's hard to tell. Ugh, I'm gonna have to censor that. <coughs> 
Anyways, we can punch this hole in the wall with a flap to cover it later. That's actually multi-purpose. Trash that gets compacted can quickly be yeeted outside for Wally to deal with. It's his problem now. And spaceship parts can be delivered inside to assemble into our next spaceship for... Blenny? I don't know, the obvious choice was already taken. Originally, the factory was supposed to have a blue classic space theme with these robot butlers working in it, but when Cosmo suddenly showed up one day, the plans changed. Regardless, this blue spaceship is semi-aquatic and designed to travel to ocean planets, where my man Blenjamin fished up yet another alien named Twinkly. And speaking of water, this machine processes the astronaut's sweats and other fluids into clean, drinkable water, just like NASA does in real life. They can even use the conveyor belt as a treadmill to work up a sweat. Just whatever you do, don't stop. No! <gasps> It was just a dream, okay. We can use some of the water in this hydroponic garden growing some leafy green space plants. In fact, Glenny's green spaceship is actually built using some of them, which he used to go capture Slimy with. I was both excited and terrified detailing the final chunks of the wall. Excited because we're on the home stretch now and I can finally get this video out to you guys. But terrified because we're rapidly running out of pieces in sand green. Thankfully though, we just barely made it by leaving the front side blank. And you know the drill by now, this undie detailed area is to add a sign for the factory with brick built lettering. I really wanted to spell out spaceship as it would look really cool with the armada we've assembled so far, but for legal reasons we can't have it sticking out this far. Let's just steal the C and E to write rocket here instead. That fits a lot better, and now the leftover letters spell spa ship. I guess. So we can use them to build whatever this is supposed to be for Kenny. A literal spa ship with more than enough details like plush curtains that definitely don't block visibility, scented flowers, and even a slide into yet another hot tub. That's about as close as we'll get to a slide in the factory this time around. And I'm not a huge fan of the alien Kenny found named MLG, but that's a different story. This thing honestly looks more comfortable than the bleak metal interior of the factory. So let's add some details to fix that, like a space bed, space kitchenettes, a bunch of random space knickknacks, and this holographic space board game Denny's teaching Benny to play. But now it's time to violently slam a roof on this thing, with a little hole here for the trash compactor handle, and a giant hole here because I ran out of pieces. Now of course. Both the roof and the front wall are obviously removable, so you can see the newly decorated interior inside, and we can decorate the roof with very light greebling detail and the iconic smokestacks in the back. If I asked you to draw a spaceship as a kid, oh, what the heck? you'd probably draw one of these guys or maybe a UFO. Probably not one of these. So we'll adorn the roof with this one, made from a minifigure rocket ship costume, and turn this one into Xeni spaceship, a classic looking UFO. She used the built-in tractor beam to capture a lot of random cows, and more importantly, Leggy, who walks in a really weird way. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh no. It's time to cover this hole up with this super cool space dome thing that can actually open up to let spaceships blast off through it. And the final ship we need is for Joe Wenny, who has the same purple torso as a certain space snail from 22ville. I decided to recreate his old spaceship as a cute little mini version with another snail inside, complete with the same license plate and everything. And we all know what this JM stands for, right? But Joe Wenny skirted off to a very special planet to capture an alien named Gloppy. I asked ChatGPT to write gloppy lore, so uh, here you go, this is canon now I guess. But thanks to the 100% completed factory, we've now got every color spaceship built and ready for our big final mission. If we don't stop the source of these aliens soon, new ones will just keep coming, growing bigger and stronger, and eventually consume the galaxy. But Future Cosmo also warned Garrett it was their last chance to get the temporal jade back before it was too late. Everything depended on this battle. Robbie and Sparky led the squadron toward planet Earth, to the ruins of a once great city called 24ville. They somberly scan the wreckage, trying to find the source of the aliens. Oh, there it is, the final boss. It's go time. And with that, the galaxy is saved. Denny turned on some Neptunes to celebrate, and dang it, every time I say that, it always gets back up. No! Despite Garrett's best attempts, Cosmo used the Temporal Jade to de-age the Mega Alien, saving poor Denny from being eaten in front of his son. Now it's just a harmless little guy. Aww. Oh, sorry. Uh, my, my bad, guys. Well, I guess there is nothing to worry about. The future is saved, and Garrett can go back home to the present. 
or not. We've actually got one more adventure left in the 24 bill finale. But while you wait for that, watch this video about the motorized mech factory I built.